I've been thinking and remembering and recalling in the last few days movies that I've seen at different times. And when I was a kid, and when I say a kid, I don't mean a teenager or even what we would call a tween. I mean, like, you know, from four up to ten or so. A lot of the movies that we saw were not in movie theaters themselves. They were in what we call drive-in movie theaters where you would actually like drive your car in there. They became, I guess they, they first started in the 1930s and they became really popular in the 50s and 60s and they kept building them. And doing a little research on this because I was trying to figure out, well, what movie theater did we actually go to? It looks like Wisconsin got into the game a little bit later in the 60s and 70s. And I, I was growing up as a kid in the 70s. We lived officially in the township of Delafield in a subdivision that took a long time to fill up. That used to be old prairie and woods called the Hills of Delafield, just north of uh, the village of Wales, where I went to elementary school and, you know, we actually would do a lot of things in, in Wales. And so we lived really far out in the sticks. Just to give you an idea about that, and I think I may have mentioned this in other stories, for a long time there were almost no restaurants around us. We were living out in the middle of nowhere. I know we could go into Delafield, and there were a few restaurants there. On the way on Highway 83, there was a, a drive-in, um, what would you call it? Like, you know, it was called Dog and Suds, and so that tells you what they had. Uh, you know, hot dogs and hamburgers, I guess, and stuff like that, and then root beer. I think it still exists. You can still find Dog and Suds root beer. And you pull your car up, and then they, you know, they'd hook this thing onto the window, and you'd give your order, and they'd come out with your, your food, and you'd eat it in your car, right? There was no inside to it. Um, well, the, the drive-in movie theaters were like that too. And I don't remember exactly which one we went to. I just remember, you know, it's probably like a half hour drive to get there. So it might've been the one that was further west on highway 18. Um, it might've been the one that was on the east side of Waukesha for all I know, which would have equally been about the same distance off of Highway 59. But this is kind of a big thing, you know. You would, you'd pile into your car, and for us it was, you know, my dad and my mom and then me and my sister. And, you know, front seats at that time were not generally bucket seats, except in, like, sports cars. It was like a big bench seat, and everyone would sit there. And, you know, you'd bring like blankets and pillows. And actually, we would go in our pajamas because it was at night. We would typically fall asleep. So, you know, we'd drive out there. And I think we'd bring like some, you know, some water and some sodas or something like that. Maybe maybe some beers for my mom and dad. I don't I don't really know. And then you could like you could order food. Right. But you you'd drive up and then you would get this uh, speaker. <laughs> That would clip onto your your window. And, you know, when you think about it, the sound quality could not have been particularly good. It's all coming through this little speaker. Maybe they were also projecting it, you know, on, on broad speakers. Um, but, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't hear really great. But you had this gigantic movie screen, and you would look through your windshield, or you might actually even get out of the car and sit on the car if it was warm enough, and you just watch it right? Everybody together hanging out. And there'd be, you know, like older people in their cars and families like us in our cars and tons of teenagers and 20 somethings, um, probably not paying much attention to the movie, but like making out or getting it on or stuff like that. But we would be there and we would, uh, we'd watch the movie. And you could hear the people around you sometimes, like if it was a very dramatic part of the movie, ooh, ah, you know, doing that kind of thing. People would also clap at the end of the movies as well. And um, oftentimes it'd be like a double header, like they'd play one movie and then they'd play another. Or they'd play some cartoons before the movie and then they'd, they'd play the movie. And I only remember, I know we went to a whole bunch of these, right? 
I only actually remember two movies particularly well from that uh, theater, wherever it happened to be. One of them was called Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger. And this was like an adventure movie based very, very loosely on the character Sinbad from the Arabian Nights. And, you know, it's, um, I think if we were to watch it now, we'd be like, holy crap, the special effects on that were, were pretty awful. It had a lot of like, um, what we now call claymation things. You know, he's fighting like a saber tooth tiger and, you know, it would be like stop motion photography. Um, what else did he, he fight a whole bunch of different, um, monsters of, of different sorts. And I don't really remember much of the plot. <laughs> I just remember Sinbad fighting all of these these uh, monsters and going on sea voyages, and I thought it was really super cool. The other movie that I remember actually seeing in the theater, and we, we might have actually seen a sequel to Sinbad in the, the drive-in theater. The other movie I remember seeing was... Um, the uh, Smokey and the Bandit. I almost said Cannonball Run, but no, it was Smokey and the Bandit. And if you don't know that movie, it is, what's the genre of it? I guess, you know, vehicle movies. Um, there were quite a few that were quite popular at the time. There was Convoy. And basically, um, if I remember what's going on right, Burt Reynolds has got a super fast car and all the cops are trying to chase him. Meanwhile, his buddy is, I think, hauling beer that's illegal from one state to the other or something like that. And uh, anyway, he's, he's uh, uh, the bandit, I think. And um, Smokey is, of course, the cops, right? Because he used to communicate with CBs, right? Oh, Smokey's down the, down the road from us, right? And again, I don't remember an awful lot of the plot from it. I just remember there was a lot of like car chases and funny moments and probably jokes that I didn't quite get, but my parents were laughing at. And uh, that's what, you know, that's what a lot of movies were like, you know. I do remember also going to see some uh, sci-fi movies. As a matter of fact, now that I recall, I also did see um, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, in a different drive-in movie, and this is when I was a tween with my, uh, th at that time, Aunt Bib and soon-to-be Uncle Scott. And that was the summer that actually my dad died, and I was staying in Indiana the entire summer. And, you know, drive-in movies were, were really big. Same sort of deal. You pull up, you get your speaker, um, maybe you, you walk somewhere and get some popcorn or uh, sodas, or hot dogs, or what you know, candy, whatever it's going to be, and that's that's what we typically did. You know, there'd be like gravel everywhere because um, you you know you were at a, a drive-in theater and the parking was on gravel. So I remember like walking on the gravel and like going with my dad to pick up popcorn for all of us and you know, some, some drinks or, or stuff like that. And then, you know, if you had to go to the bathroom, uh, you would, you would get out and walk over to the bathroom and it was kind of a cool atmosphere. It's very different than going to an indoor theater where, you know, you've got your ticket and you pay for it. Uh, and then you walk in and somebody takes your ticket and then they're like, go over there, you know, and you go to the, the drink and food counter and you get your stuff and you walk to your seat and then, you know, put your soda in the, the cup holder and you got your popcorn in your lap or your, you know, uh, Twizzlers or Jujubees or whatever it happens to be that you're going to eat. Right. And then everyone, you know, it's dark in there and, uh, you know, first the previews come on and all this sort of stuff and. So the outdoor theater was much more of a communal thing. I mean, you can go with your family to a regular theater and you're all sitting in the same seats, right? But this was like you're literally in the same vehicle. And it was, I just remember it being a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed it. And I think that, you know, sometimes it could be a little chilly. So you'd have like a blanket and, you know, uh, you might fall asleep during the movie or something like that if it was pretty late. Certainly we'd fall asleep on the car ride back home. 
Um, and it was a, a really fun, enjoyable thing for me as a kid that um, I, I don't think we did an awful lot of later on. You know, it just kind of dropped out and going to regular movie theaters became the way things were done. Or we'd watch things, watch movies as they became available on TV through cable. So it was, it was in a certain sense, a, a not necessarily a product of its time, because it was a product of an earlier time that had gotten carried forward. But it was something that you did in the 70s much more than you would in the 80s or the 90s. Apparently, um, during COVID, drive-in theaters experienced a kind of uh, renaissance because you could sit in your car and not be sitting next to somebody else who might have COVID in the movie theater. So, you know, those that were still around started doing uh, better business. And there were even like impromptu drive-in theaters where they would just find like a building to project uh, movies onto and everyone would get together that way or you do it in a park or something kind of cool like that. But this was like a, a regular thing and it was mostly for us something that we did in the summer. Um, I don't think we did it too far into the fall because it you know, would start to get really cold, right? And you've got your window open. But I, I think there were some drive-in theaters that would actually run like almost year-round, even here in, in Wisconsin. We just didn't uh, typically go to them. But, you know, to bring this to a close, this was a, a really pleasant memory for me, thinking about how we would get together as a family. And sometimes, I remember this as well, sometimes we'd get together with a couple families and each would like have their own car and you'd like arrange, yeah, we're going to be there at seven o'clock, you know, as the sun is starting to, to go down and we're all going to hang out together. We'll park next to each other, right? Uh, maybe, you know, people will swap from car to car, like we'll put all the kids in this car and then the adults can be in this car or something like that. And it was just such a, a fun thing to do. And I'm, I'm really glad that, um, you know, my childhood included that. It was also pretty cheap, you know, which I think that was an attraction for my parents who were making good money, but, you know, both came from kind of blue collar families. So they, and it was the seventies too. So, you, you know, you, you saved your money for as much as you could. Um, so that's, that's basically all there is to that story. I thought I would share this uh, interesting experience that I was fortunate enough to have with you. Um, if you get a chance to go to a drive-in movie theater, um, you know, maybe check it out. There's quite a few of them out there still existing in the wild. Uh, they've actually created a few new ones, I know, here in Wisconsin. Um, and I'm sure there there's plenty all over the place in other parts of the states and other countries as well. Um, and, you know, it could be kind of a fun thing to do, different than the other much more formulaic, much more structured movie experience that we have with our theaters in the present.